is the Glass Cannon Network. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Get in the Trunk season. I was going to say season 12. Oh, God. Whoa. That's going to probably happen, which is terrifying. Season 5, <laughs> episode 12, show open, take two. We already opened this show, and I screwed up my... My recording, and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't record our hot open, but there was, was some hot. singing involved. I don't know the song you're singing, but it has to do with <laughs> drinking gasoline. Yes, that's not what it's about. <laughs> Got like gasoline. I cannot believe you don't know the 2000s hit by Daddy Yankee. Daddy Yankee. Daddy it Yankee. And it doesn't even sound familiar. Say. And I That's crazy. Oh. I knew most early 2000s songs that slapped. You I, probably I you'd probably recognize it if it was blasting out of somebody's car stereo <laughs> at the <laughs> highest <laughs> volume <laughs> possible. Because <laughs> that's the <laughs> only time it was played. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if it's not about drinking gasoline, what is it about doing with gasoline? Filling Pouring it up. on your enemies. <laughs> 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 Before you light them a blaze. No, it, it was, I think it's, it's like some, filling yeah, it's up like, their pit bikes. Like they all have like little like pit bikes, right? Oh, I have no idea. Honestly, I, I'm, I'm too old to really understand what the, the kids music, are talking about. The music video. They're all doing like <laughs> cool spin outs on their little motorbikes. Oh, and I was I, like, that's cool. I don't think I even seen the video. I was just <laughs> literally just hearing it, uh, people blasting it on Maybe the street. Maybe it's about the price of gasoline. They're, just, <laughs> they're angry because it's too high. <laughs> yes. It's very, it's a political well, economic the entire song is also, gasoline. it's in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to tell what's going on because it's in Spanish. She likes my gas. Gasoline, give me my. It's like, oh, it's come. She likes my gasoline. Oh, <laughs> give me more give gasoline. Me gasoline. She just loves. Come. She loves my gasoline. Yeah, give me more gasoline. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's okay. Uh, it's it's about, uh, man juice. <laughs> it's man juice. Man juice. Fill me with gasoline. <laughs> <laughs> gasoline. <laughs> this is an innuendo. <laughs> Use my t shirt to clean your gasoline. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, amazing. Oh. <laughs> You now we know what it is. <laughs> man's semen can power a vehicle. <laughs> a pit exactly. bike. <laughs> a pit. That's great. Uh, yeah, speaking of not understanding uh, Spanish songs that are awesome, I heard this song while we were on tour. I can't remember which show it was. I feel like it was L.A. And uh, I would took a lift and I was in the car and the guy was blasting this song. And I was like, holy shit, this <laughs> is so good. And I couldn't understand a word of it. And I <laughs> looked it up during the ride, put it on my Spotify. Check it out. It's called La Jumpa. La Jumpa. La Jum by Archangel and Bad Bunny. Oh, Ooh. Joe. You. Okay, Joe. Bad You're getting big, big points. You're getting big points in Sydney's world. Wow. Yeah. Archangel, <laughs> amazing electronic artist. Like Ooh. amazing. Oh, okay, yeah, because okay. the electronic beat was so oh, that's sick. why you like it. And probably Bab like it. And Baboni is Bab 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 Yeah, but like the way that, is that the guy who's doing the vocals? Is that Bad Bunny? Because yeah. the way that he raps, like he sounds so I don't know. It's hard to explain because I don't know any of the words that are coming out of his mouth. Right, so all right. I'm listening to <laughs> is like the sound of his vibe yeah. and his tone. And he just sounds like the like most dripping with confidence alpha male like on the planet. <laughs> he has this lazy rap style that is just like, I don't give a fuck about anything. And it's so, <laughs> but it's so strong. Anyway, I was just like into it. I was nice. into it. I'm going to check Hell it yeah. out. I, gotta, I, I haven't heard that one. I got to check it out. Yeah. La Jumpa. Check it La out. Jumpa. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Uh, we are back here for uh, another ep of getting the trunk as you guys come, in a lot of ways, full circle back to the kind of where you were in, in episode 12 of season four. Kind of. <sighs> yeah. Maybe maybe a little bit um, earlier in season four, but you're talking about returning to the night floors, quote unquote, as as you call it. 
Let's take a quick recap of season four. Just very briefly, you guys discovered a doorway in an apartment building in New York City in 1995 that opened up into some sort of other world. It opened into a smoking lounge that seemed to be a place out of time, playing old jazz records and and uh, old jazz music and uh, a, a, like a shining style bartender, like in the back corner, like nameless and, and not saying anything. And uh, you moved through these floors and there were different rooms. There were banquet rooms. You saw a wedding happening. It was Vicky's wedding. You saw pictures on the wall of people, emotionless, holding bottles, J. Lintz, E. Mosby, D. Carver, uh, N. Bachman, with no person, just a bottle. All kinds of creepy stuff. Roger saw an old woman that he feels like he then saw in the future in like 2007 or 2009 or something like that. And he put a pillow over her face and shot her <laughs> as this senior <laughs> citizen. Uh, he found a room filled with blood and uh, two shotguns and a bag full of money that was 1920s U.S. currency. And in blood <laughs> written on the wall, it just said, where is my bottle? He walked out dual wielding shotguns when he ran into <laughs> Mark Rourke, who was a, an insurance salesman who had just talked to you guys and was like, don't go to that party unless you plan on never coming back. Roger put that shotgun right up to Mark Rourke's face. I'll take you out right now. Please don't shoot me. And Roger, for some reason, let him go. These are all very important developments that lead you back 20 years later to a place where you suspect a very similar thing is happening. A doorway is opening to another world, you believe. And Dr. Dallin could be part of it, could be a demon. There's lots, lots going on here, and it is your intention now to, as a group, return to the Dorchester House, a psychiatric hospital in the Dorchester neighborhood of Boston, to see if it really does, if that door really does exist at night, and if you're able to get in there and get back to some sort of night floors type world. The reason that you come to this conclusion that you must do this is because you're on your own now. Last episode, Vicky said, we need to finish the job. Roger said, the job is finished. There is no job. We're cut off from Delta Green. This is personal. Bobby knows he doesn't want the name of his name, his, content, his, his father's name and address in the hands of this machine that, that's getting it from somewhere. He wants to find the source and cut the head of the snake off. So that he doesn't have to worry about these things anymore. Neil, we see Neil Bachman, we see slowly degrading in his uh, sanity. He he escaped into the sewer after Roger lit uh, Dr. Barbus's house on fire. And he says the rats told him how to get out and led him out. They're very intelligent. <laughs> oh dear. We're losing them. As they're <laughs> sitting at breakfast trying to plan how they're going to possibly return to the night floors or contact Delta Green or summon a demon. When asked when they ask Neil what his thoughts are, he's just been looking at penguins. Or at <laughs> pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> penguins would be you much would worse. Be too. He's I see like the 25. Yeah. He sees uh, the penguins. <laughs> Mechanically, Neil is sitting at 33 sanity points. Vicky is sitting at 64 sanity points. Bobby is sitting pretty low too. 41? 41. 41. And where is Roger? 59. 59. Okay. Oh, All right. Not too shabby. <laughs> That's scary. Okay. <laughs> 59 sanity and he wanted to summon a demon. <laughs> hey. I just wanted to talk to him. Yeah, exactly. That is not so talk to works. someone who isn't going to talk to anyone else. That's, I mean, this really is the best witness. <laughs> Your Honor, I'd like to call to the stand uh, Beelzebub. <laughs> uh, because, like, you can ask him. You don't have to worry about him tattling on us. You know what I mean? He's, he's a demon. Maybe we can cut a deal. But, like, listen, normally we don't work together. But uh, there are a group of really sick people that we need to just kill all at once. This sounds like your bag. And in exchange, we just want to know who you've been talking to. We'll give you all these souls. And, you know, if you want to throw in some powers, that we'll take those two. 
Okay. <laughs> the demon's like, that sounds like a good deal. <laughs> if I was a demon, I'd take that deal. <laughs> yeah, all right. I'm listening. <laughs> I wonder if there are like uh, hyper religious people that watch this show and are just like, uh, I can't. I, demon uh, talk. I can't. It's Some definitely people, when, it's when definitely Sydney possible. started reading and carving stuff into her arm last week, I was like, <laughs> that's going to make some people uncomfortable. <laughs> I, I get it. Some people don't fuck with ghosts. Some people straight up are like, no I ghost don't stuff. Ghosts. I don't, I don't, fuck with I don't want to hear. Yeah. And some people are like, no demon stuff because that shit's real. I get it. I think in this case, it's extra interesting to like play a character who could also have those thoughts. Like I was saying, I think it was last episode with Vicky. It's like, how far do you start believing in it to where you're like making it real? Like Roger wanting to summon a demon is like, oh my God, then it's real. Then yeah. it's real. Then you're like, you're opening that up to the, the realm of possibility. Um, it's also like, it's, it's also as far as you know, as far as you've seen, especially you, Bobby, in your operational history, it's also uh, something you... There's no documented known operation that has ever done that and succeeded, right? Like people in Delta Green don't use the unnatural to fix the unnatural. They never even use it. That's part of the whole, you know, ethos. Right. But now well, every situation has its own. Uh, there's always a first. There's a first time for everything. Yeah. But that's probably where Bobby's head at is at thinking about summoning a demon. It's is you know you just kind of become that. Also, it's uh, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I'm just as scared of it as you probably are, Vicky uh, and Bobby, because it, it is truly. I think of demons in Delta Green more like you know the way I think of demons in the real world where yeah. it's so terrifying, so unknowable that it would destroy you immediately. Not like I think of demons in Pathfinder, you know what I mean? So right. it's uh, it, there's a huge difference. I'll say, uh, you know, as far as that stuff goes, I find it interesting. This is all kind of occult texts that are born from writings in the, you know, the Renaissance era Europe and stuff like that. And it's developed, you know, in the 17th century into this book and, I find it interesting that they utilize it in this fantasy game that we're playing. And I uh, was fine with it. I was like, you know, this doesn't bother me. I find it interesting. I think it's interesting to explore this kind of stuff in a fantasy setting. I actually got scared when... Sydney actually had the book in her apartment. Yeah, I was like, said, Plan that. "What <laughs> is going on?" And she brought it again. She brought it again. This all, this why this whole thing. <laughs> I, I never because the link the link wasn't working, and you're just like, "Well, I happen to have this book right Don't here." Don't worry, guys. No like, need what? for the internet. I have the book right here. <laughs> What's well, actually like, funny uh, too, because our friend Eric Mona just purchased like a very rare copy of uh Le Dictionnaire Infernal, Whoa. which uh, has the, the, the copy that Sid has probably has a lot of illustrations that come from that book. I got to wow. talk to oh, Eric. Gosh. That's yeah. awesome. I love Eric. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. See, I find it cool. I find it very interesting. I just from like a historical aspect. That's why I have this. I'm like, this is fascinating. Not because I'm like, how to how to summon a demon? <laughs> to summon a demon. Step I'm one. sure. I'm sure you'll find it fascinating right up until you spend an eternity in hell. <laughs> uh, Already heading right there. Right up until then, it's I feel like, <laughs> wish I hadn't have done that. Uh, <laughs> one thing I'll mention as part of the recap is, and this is an important part. The reason this was even possible is because Vicky had uh, like a nightmare that her friend Sarah, her former sponsor in AA was summoning a demon in her suburban home, utilizing the exact wording that Vicky found on a torn out piece of paper within Dr. Barbus's copy of Ars Goetia. And it is written in a, another hand. It is not Dr. Barbus's handwriting. This is someone else's handwriting. Uh, let's put that back on screen for a second. The I invoke I invoke the I invoke the bornless one, etc. Um, this summoning ritual is also detailed. So that even is what gives Roger a chance. But it sounds like you're not going to go with the summoning option, at least now, not at least in this world. The conversation turned to, hey, if we're going to summon a demon, why don't we do it in the night floors so that the demon's not in Boston? Right. Uh, <laughs> right. Not in Copley Square. <laughs> Copley Square. <laughs> I don't think they can handle it. It sounds so sane in theory. Like, why don't we just summon it in the night floors? Yeah, but like, that makes sense. 
we'll see what happens. That seems insane <laughs> to me and to Vicky Ricci. Yeah. But. Anytime anyone talks about summoning a demon in any circumstance, uh, my first thought is always, that sounds sane. That's, you know, that's, <laughs> that's normal, that's normal, normal. Probably a bad idea. When I lose a point it. of sanity, I let it linger for uh, a whole session. <laughs> oh, I see. So you're really yeah. meta. Wow, that's really good. Thanks, Troy. Let's just get into Roger. He's not doing it. Yeah, well. Okay. So here's what I want to do. I'll pitch it to you guys. You guys tell me what you want to do. It is your game after all. I just want to go to the uh, hospital at night, but you do have a day. I just don't feel like role playing a day because knowing you guys, it'll turn into 80 checks and the police will be there and it'll, somebody will die. I need to go to CVS somebody and I want to play it out. <laughs> play out the whole interaction with the cashier. All right. Bing. Roger walks into a CVS. Uh, guy, Where's the chapstick? I uh, need it's, chapstick. It's right over here. Right over here under the Starts counter. Starts knocking them all off. These are my hey, flavors. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? The woman behind the counter steps back. She starts crying. Oh my God, he's going to rob the place. Where's banana cream? Ah! She pulls out a gun. People just start screaming everywhere. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. He wakes up. <gasps> <laughs> oh, she fell asleep that. in the car ride to the hospital yeah, he fell asleep. <laughs> he dozed off while <laughs> driving the car was it the CVS chapstick tree <laughs> yeah. did they have banana cream this time no Oh, oh my god. god, that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we cut from the, the breakfast table and it's like fade out and then fade into Roger shooting up a CVS. <laughs> And it's a dream he's having while driving a car. Does anybody have any chapstick? I don't have any chapstick. My lips are dry. Okay. How long was I out? Oh, fuck. Uh, procedural questions as always. Two cars? Are we taking two cars? Bobby car, Bobby's car and Roger's car? I think we should just in case. Yes, yeah. more room for Seems bodies. Smart. Yeah, yeah, more room for weapons. Um, we need this, a lot of weapons. I, I will say this day also gives you several hours to look into the book and uh, into the Ars Goetia, and you can really kind of dig in. So let's, uh, if you go to the journal entry mm. with the uh, Ars Goetia on it, I will uh, add to the text that's in the details of it. And I will add for you guys all that you find out, uh, all that's written in Barbus's hand throughout the document. Um, see if you can see a pop up there and and read some of them off to me if you see them, please. I don't see. I don't see. Just go go into the actual entry, uh, into bio and info, and then oh, you should see. see. Throughout the book, there are oh, scribbled notes in Dr. Barbus's hand. Yep. Jeepers, there's a lot of stuff here. Uh. Okay. Where is this? This is in Rule 20. Details 72 demons. Wist oh. notes check out. I wonder if that is the, the other, other person's the red, the red ink. notes. Wist. Do you know the name Wist? Uh, Wist. Ed Myler Wist. He's the patient at the hospital oh. that Neil injected oh, the guy with the little oh, guy. Oh, right. my ass. Wist. Ed Wist, the guy <laughs> the who guy killed his parents, uh, his family when he was 16. Okay. Yeah. Wist notes check out B is Solomon. So Barbus, Barbus. is Solomon. Uh, so one... he's trapping demons. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. One call each except Asmodee, which seems to be a demon name. B true is friend of V, not B, but S. Acadian? Acadian? Another demon? Acadian. Acadian? Uh, B True is also a demon. The play is still going on somewhere. Uh, mm. Dr. Dallin, middle name Forrest. That's the one Vicky found. Forrest, 29 legions, employees, uh, question mark, confused about that. Mm. Um, <laughs> person, answers truly of all secret and divine things of earth and the creation of the world. First in Lundin's house. Oh, oh. That, that's the architect, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> no, the, no the, Lundin no. is the, he's in the night floors. Lundin is the owner of the McAllister building that, that, uh, yeah. that commissioned, um, what's H. his name? Lundin. 
uh, Asa Darabondi, Asa Darabondi, Darabondi to Darabondi. be the architect of the building. And then you now know that he died in the building, uh, Henry Lundeen, and that he uh, he seemed to have a stroke. He was found dead on the stairway uh, in a robe and a white mask uh, in a stairway the right outside the roof access door. One of the four f- pictures. H. Lundeen, mm-hmm. N. N. Bachman, E. Mosby, and D. Carver. Yes. Oh. Yes. Uh, H. Lundeen, one of the names of those pictured with their bottles. Right. Okay. And then it gets really confusing. And then it says, Marbus Goetic, president, 36 servants, just like MSPFS, B, not M. Overlay Marbus and B true equals for us? Question mark. You're is in the Starry King and the Gong? Question mark. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a lot of nonsense, but yeah. uh, there are some details in there that you about it. Remember, this is all in blue ink. Yeah. There's so- other things written in red ink that, and primarily, it's that summoning ritual that's in a different. And you know, Vicky, that it is a different handwriting. Different well, person now we wrote it. Think it's Wist. We hmm. assume it's wit. Uh, can Vicky do a check, um, maybe art forgery or forensics? She looked at Wist's journal. Can she remember if the handwriting matches up, if it is uh, Wist? Oh, that's interesting. I, I don't know if you ever got a good look at it, but go ahead. You can try. Okay. What do you think? Forensics, forgery, art? Forensics. Damn it. Uh, 62 over 54. Yeah, you just don't remember. Yeah. Check that box. Check that box. Question for you, Joe. Yes. Maybe it's cheating because I have this book. It is not cheating. I think that's why I gave you the link. You have everything in that book. Why? It it depends. What does it say? (laughs) I found uh, (laughs) the fourth spirit is Samagina. Oh. What? what? Samagina or. Gamigim. They have like different names. So this is something too. Like some of these other names might be the other names of the same exact demon. So Samagina or Gamigim. The fourth spirit is Samagina, a great marquee. He appeareth in the form of a little horse or ass. And in human shape, doth he change himself at the request of the master, which makes sense in the hierarchy of like the hospital. Um, I, I did not think they were demons until you just said that. Right. <laughs> he speaketh. That's the nurse. That's Sam yeah. the nurse. Right. The nurse. That, that, yeah. That's what the employees, question mark, when he, yeah. when he wrote it. They speak in a hoarse voice and rule over 30 legions of inferiors. <sighs> and they give the account of dead souls that died in sin. Is that why that guy had the baby in his bag? So either they are demons who are you know, purposely disguising themselves or they've like, uh, you know, possessed these people. The demons possess. That sounds like something demons would yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. It seems, um, seems like something. But it wasn't demons. one of the also, things Sam they could Gina do. Is- specifically, it says, can take a human shape of either sex at the request of okay. their master. Yeah. That's what I want Who to know. It's like, is Dr. Dallin. So Dallin is a demon. So now this changes things. We're not going in there just possibly killing people. We're trying we, we're going in there and trying to put down demons. That seems more dangerous. And that's why we need a demon of our own. <laughs> we also need a shit ton of explosives. I don't know how to kill a demon. <laughs> well, you're never going to learn that way. I think we uh, <laughs> carve the symbol of Marbus and overlay it with Beetru on our arms so that we can call for us to our side. For us is Dr. Dallin. Well, then we'll just question him here at the Denny's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's In summon Dr. Dallin outside of payment <laughs> coffee or whatever. Him. Yeah, we can God. just be like, hey, we, we don't have to carve doing? anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, too, is like- It's got a butter knife. You know, what is a demon? Like, I think it's, <clears throat> this could- just be a medieval ancient means of sort of categorizing, trying to make sense of something which is like Delta Green has been fighting all along. This could just be another name for the same kind of forces that we fight. So, like, what this could just be like their understanding of the unknowable. So, I don't know. Like, what does I don't know if this is like if we're going to be facing like biblical demons or whatever. And what does this have to you know? do with? the the king in yellow 
Well, that's what he's saying. He's saying this, it's possible that this is the king in yellow as defined by peoples of the 15th century that yeah. could, didn't oh, understand what they were experiencing. So he called it demons, you know. Um, that, that that's what you're saying, Skid, right? Like uh, it, it's it's though just their understanding of what is you know supernatural. It's not necessarily a biblical definition of a demon, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This is just their attempt to place a definition, a shape to this kind of un un a, a kind of this thing that cannot be understood by humans. Marvis Goetic president, thirty six. Servants, just like MSPFS. MSPFS. I don't know what that miss. Like the other one, Doctor Dallin, DRD. This is. Sh- oh wait, can I roll as Vicky to understand like the shorthand? Like she assumed for Doctor Dallin for MSPFS. No. Okay. Like you have to crack it as a player, or okay. it's it's not. I think a lot of this stuff we'll only be able to understand after we come across more stuff later on. Some of this stuff is just not available to us yet. Yeah. To be able to also, make sense they are the, and you said this before, they are the writings of a madman. Right? Yeah. So, so it there, could be. some of it could just be complete nonsense. Some of it could lead you directly to actual should, clues. Should we go talk before the hospital is closed? Should we go talk to Ed Wist? He's, uh, he might have some knowledge. I'm I really mean, asking Neil this, I guess. <laughs> Neil was the one. I'm, he hates me. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, he, he hates, hates Neil. He Sorry, hates, my, he hates my, Bobby. My oh, I forgot. Neil stabbed him. Oh, right. <laughs> Did you talk to me? Were you saying something to me? Uh, Neil is so out of it. Uh, <laughs> I was saying, as a party, do we think it's even worth it to go talk to Ed Wist now that we have this and we could be like, oh. we know, and just try to get more? He's also crazy. They're all fucking crazy. Yeah. 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 And right. also, I mean, if we're coming back to the hospital at night, we haven't been there in two days, they're if they if their guard isn't already up against us, it's going. We're going to look suspicious. Like we need a very definite game plan that will certainly fall apart. <laughs> um, but immediately, I mean, I just feel like we got to get Dallin alone in his office. Yeah, and kill him, and then search the office. Okay, bar, let's bar, summon him. Barricade ourselves. <laughs> let's summon him, let's Troy, summon him. to the pavement coffee. No. By, by cell phone. <laughs> yeah. so by cell phone rather than sacrificing. We could call and say, can we meet this evening? We have some very important information we think is going to wrap up the investigation. We just want to run a couple things by you, really play it, uh, play it smart and see if we can get him in his office. And then we, you know, take him out if we have to. And and get access to the doorway. Yeah, we could try it. Why not? Just say after hours, you know, like we're We've wrapping got, stuff up. We're yeah. meetings all day. Yeah, yeah, we just need to meet him at night at the office. To, yeah, we could say like we're closing about. loose ends with local law enforcement, but we pretty much wrapped it up. We need to meet with you tonight at like 6 p.m. Yeah. Or 7 yeah. p.m. Whenever the sun goes down in yeah. September, whatever. Well, uh, and this 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 should be it. We, th- we, think, uh, we think we're ready to to close this case and move on. Make it sound really nonchalant. Yeah. Murnau, how many of those syringes do you have? I ask in Vicky's voice. Mm-hmm. Oh, as many as we need. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't been taking any of your on your own, have you? <laughs> Sorry, that <laughs> <bad> joke. <laughs> Murnau, right. are, are you okay? No, I'm wonderful. Never felt better. <laughs> Okay. okay. You know, rats really are very intelligent. Far more yeah. than we give them credit for. Suddenly, I feel bad for all the scientific experimentation that they've been subjects of over the course of human endeavor. Right. Right. <laughs> He's fine. He's fine. Who's making the call? Let's get this shit show on the, <laughs> on the road who's making the call um also what if he says no we just show up anyways say, we're coming anyway <laughs> no, then say, if he says no explosives explosives and we, yeah. we go in there Bring we explosives. blow the thing well let's not give ground. him an option let's say 
we will be. All right, I call Doctor Dell. Okay, yes. there we go. Yes, Get there we go. the show. He's got this on the road. I'll play Doctor Dell. Stupid and anything you want. I just finished eating some humans because I'm a demon. Falling right into what demons do? Human breakfast. <laughs> um, <laughs> you hear uh, a woman's voice picks up the phone uh, midday here at uh, the Dorchester house Dorchester house hi this is detective isotope is this Gail yes it is hi Gail uh, we've met before um, I'm hoping to reach Dr. Dal and we have some very important information hold please Click. thank you so much <laughs> you hear a little hold music. Oh, what a feeling. <laughs> we dancing on the ceiling. It's weird that they have dancing on the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> I put on speaker. I put on speaker for everybody. Listen. All right. That's All right, it's on speaker. It's on speaker, so everyone can be heard. Unless you turn the speaker, I, 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 you turn the speaker off. Here we go. Just click. I turn it back. You turn it off? I turn it back off. Okay. Uh, just click. <clears throat> Hello, uh, Detective Isotope. Dr. Dallin? Yes. Hi, uh, yes, it's Detective Isotope. Um, we have some very important information. We, uh, we're wrapping things up today with local law enforcement, and we will be at the hospital later tonight, probably what? around 6 p.m. Wrapping things up? Well, we, You uh, found them? We've had a huge break in this case. Where and, are uh, they? I can't discuss this over the phone. Uh, we'll be there around 6 p.m. Um, and we're hoping to meet with you, preferably privately, um, after hours. Uh, are you available? Um, uh, we could do later as could well. Could we do a little bit later? I'm sorry, we, I just have a, an appointment at that time, but I could do a little bit later. Uh, what did I say, 6.30? Uh, about 7? Uh, let's do... Let's do 8. 8 p.m. Um, yes. And you can't give me any details on the patients. Are you bringing the patients with you? I will. Dis we will discuss everything when we see you in person. 8 p.m. Um, 8 we'll, p.m. We'll be there a little earlier, um, but we will meet with you at 8 p.m. Uh, yeah, I, I can't say anything else. I will see you then. Okay, we'll see you then. Thank you. This is great. Thank you. Bye. I already hung up. <laughs> and he hangs up before you. <laughs> Fuck! I call him back. Uh, I need the last word. Uh, Quick. She turns. All right. Good Did stuff. you hear all that? <laughs> Sound good. So we're going 8 p.m. Let's get there at 7.30. He has a meeting, he said, at 6.30 p.m. I don't know what meeting is going to take two hours after hours, but I don't trust him. I kind of want to be at that meeting. Well, we can get there even earlier, but I would... That might be more suspicious. We can scope it out. Maybe we'll get away. Disguise us. We could get there earlier and do a, a walk around, a, per, a perimeter walk around of the hospital. I mean, we still have full full access. Yeah. Yep. Doesn't hurt to show up early. Maybe his meeting will end early. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe we not. get a get a look at who he's meeting with. Or mm -hmm. we can go back to the scene of the crime and listen in on the meeting through the small door in Exeter's house. <laughs> That leads somewhere else. Yeah. Also, I yeah. shot a gun in there. And it burnt to the ground. <laughs> the clown turned into books. Of course. Of course. All right. So, what do we want to do in Boston for the day? <laughs> Duck tour. Nathaniel Hall. <laughs> Did you say Nathaniel Did you just Hall? say Nathaniel? Nathaniel. 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 You know it's not called that, right? <laughs> it's not, not named after a guy named Nathaniel Hall. <laughs> <laughs> I th I don't know. There's the there's the the um Nathaniel <laughs> Hall. And that's why we need to take the duck boat tour so we can learn. There's the aquarium right next door too. We can look at the seals. Yeah. Have you guys been to the replica Cheers at Nathaniel Hall? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Faneuil Hall, the worst name place ever. 
<laughs> you um, just Googled uh, it, didn't you? <laughs> no. <laughs> I saw your eyes. <laughs> They're like, let's go to Nathaniel Hall. <laughs> uh, what's funny is I always want to call it Nathaniel. I don't know why. And I just did it. I like accidentally Nathaniel. do it all the time. That's hilarious. Vicky, though, would like to look at the book more if there's more information to be had at the other there's no more information to be had uh, unless you find it yourself you have the website you literally have the book in your apartment find more information yourself Mm. if you want it otherwise we are cutting to getting to the hospital this is what i was trying to avoid unless you have specific things you want to do during the day that aren't goofing around (sighs) and are directly related to your operation we can totally do that you have a day can you do like a quick montage of us at the aquarium? Sure. Um, I'll put the uh, I'll put the link in our chat here, so just in case people didn't see it on the uh, map. Uh, for God's sakes, man! I, what a pain! <laughs> I do think that since, uh, in honor of the fact that we now all know each other's names, we Ooh. should at least stop in at Cheers. <laughs> yes. Actually, good that's one, funnier. Let's let's do that. We go let's to Cheers for lunch, and then we go to the hospital. All right. So we um, we see a montage of you at lunch at Cheers. Does anybody fire a gun off at any point during it? <laughs> no, but I drink heavily at eleven in the morning. Okay. Yeah. So right. getting hammered in anticipation of our late night mission. <laughs> we gotta go fight demons. Let's get liquored up. Let's get boozy. Two more. So Roger is completely trashed, minus 20% to all skills when you boozy, arrive. Boozy brunch. I had 17 Bud Lights. <laughs> and a cheeseburger. I had the Norm Burger. <laughs> Sometimes you, you want to go. <laughs> beer cheese. Do you guys know each other's names? We yeah. Do. That's right. Do you know each other's lives? Is everybody staying secretive? I mean, I think we might as well just, that's what we do at Cheers, is we just kind of like. We just share. We just share. the basics. Yeah. 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 You share a little bit of your real life, Bobby? Do you say you're a CIA agent? Especially now because like, this is like a, this is a Delta Green sort of protocol. And like, we're now kind of, uh, we're, we are our own Delta Green right now. Like we're kind of, we feel like isolated from the organization itself. So like the rules are ours now. These are our rules. We can only trust each other. So yeah, I think like from my my logic, I think that's 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 justification for that. So you're a doctor. Doctor of what? I have two doctorates actually. I have one doc- medical doctorate and uh, I have a doctorate in art history. <laughs> wow, can't argue with that. Do you, uh. I'm sorry, I'm just, uh. How did you. When it comes to these things, do you do surgery on paintings? I, I can, I, I could. You've been a little bit of for uh, that. That's a bit of school. Do pa- this is gonna sound stupid. Do paintings get sick? <laughs> they do. Sometimes they need. They need to be healed. I've done some painting restoration in my time, as a matter of fact. It's a little bit of a hobby of mine. Well, I learned something today. And your name's really Cumstone. That's not a <laughs> code name. It's, uh, it's Roger Cumstone, that's right. Roger Cumstone. Yes. It's what that, what nationality uh, is that? Yeah, is that Gaelic? What, uh, not, where is that from? This is not a name I've come across. <laughs> it's uh, French-German. French and German, Alsatian. <laughs> sure. Okay. I'm, not, I'm no doctor. This <laughs> is no. quite curious. Just wondering. Good. Very good. <laughs> so the montage of Cheers was just one long conversation <laughs> between Dr. Bachman and Roger comes yeah. to <laughs> basically. I, I don't feel think. Like- I don't think I, Bobby would share his real name. I think he'd, he'd probably give him the UN cover. I don't think he would share that he's a full CIA agent yet. I oh. I don't think he's ready for that. Man, no. we're still keeping secrets even now. Wow. You're keeping secrets. Hey. After everything? I am born in the darkness. So you <laughs> consider. You just adopted him. 
<laughs> what, what is that from? That's, that's Batman's. Bane. That's Bane. I was born Bane. to be a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be a doctor. You should be a doctor. He was born to be a doctor. Nice, Francis. No, but I think it's it's part of the character because he's still he's still trying to harness this occult power for himself. So he doesn't want to give too. He doesn't want to let anybody know too much about how much he knows. Is it safe I, to say that you would consider these people your yes. enemies? Uh, that's why you don't tell them anything. Enemies, no, but possible possible roadblocks, if they knew, they might stand in my way, and I okay. don't want to have to end one of them. Ho, 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 ho. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Was that out loud? Sorry. <laughs> I can't believe you're sitting at Cheers having these thoughts. <laughs> if one of them gets in my way, Sometimes I'll have to end you I was born in darkness. Where no one knows your name. <laughs> <laughs> we'll send you to a place where nobody knows <laughs> Okay. Well, Neil, I think he he shares all like the fact that he's like selling drugs, like everything. Okay. Wow. Yeah, lays it all Overshare. Out. I like it. I like he it. shares yeah, that he's shares. selling drugs that uh, that he, somebody might be onto him. That there was mm-hmm. uh, a, yeah, an ins- uh, inspector. I can't remember who it was. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everything. The medical board. Yeah. Okay. And oh, everything. Okay. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Does Bobby's he discuss the this. crown? Yeah. Oh. What does he say? Yeah. Um. He just he describes like the whole kind of process, like finding it in the in the deposit the the, the deposit box, and um, you know he talks about like how tempted he was by it, how it still sort of haunts him. Wow. Bobby, Bobby's suddenly interested. He's he, he wants to know more. Yeah, really. And yes, and I still don't know exactly what it is. There is some some power to it. Something I found in my travels. Something, something that draws me. I can't identify it. It frightens me, but it also intrigues me. I see. And you still have this crown? I do, but not here. Huh. So... Guess that makes you the king of New York. Perhaps. Perhaps. It's not exactly a responsibility I relish. New York is ungovernable. (laughs) (laughs) But the power is tempting, still. King of New York as a date with the president of hell. (laughs) Well put. And with that, let's cut to pulling up. What time? Mm, I think we should get there at 6.30 when I originally said the original (laughs) meeting. Roger gets there at 5.58 (laughs) a.m. (laughs) <laughs> the next day you missed the whole night yeah. <laughs> fuck that's he's not so drunk try. he's just like dude that's not bad that's not that's not on a bench and fail off <laughs> with like a cheer shirt on oh my god <laughs> like a souvenir pint glass <laughs> <laughs> like a, he stole one of the cutouts he's got like clips cut out he's <laughs> got like a John Ratzenberger like <laughs> John Ratzenberger cut out <laughs> oh my god you got two boston like park beat cops uh, are just standing over him there he is one pokes you with a nightstick yo buddy yo buddy hey pal did you have hey, a little kids. too much at cheers i paid for this cut out <laughs> Hey, good money for this. <laughs> you can't sleep here. You can't, yeah, you sleep, can't here, sleep here. All right, you can't sleep on the park bench, pal. And they're both like laughing. <laughs> Jesus Christ! All right, Cliff and I will be on our way. <laughs> we'll be on our way. <laughs> oh, <Cliff. laughs> Uh, oh god! Oh god! Amazing. Picturing this oversized white Cheers T-shirt like yeah. over your clothes that you're wearing. 
<laughs> okay. Oh my god. So Roger gets some rest. Uh and 6:30, 7, 7:30, 6:30. Five fifty. Yeah. 6:30. 6:30. We're we're all going. You pull up up the driveway and you get to the gatehouse. And there is a young officer behind the thing and he steps out. Can I help you? Uh, yeah, we're uh, the detective, state detectives heading back to see the doctor. Uh, I'm sorry, the hospital closes at five o'clock. Yeah, no, it's fine. We we got an appointment with the doctor up there. We're gonna we're gonna sh- just you know have a few words with him at his office. He's a- I don't know anything about an appointment. I'm sorry. Uh, you can detective. call Doctor Dallin. I spoke with him yesterday. We have an appointment, and it's important that we get there for okay. our appointment. All right. Okay. And he steps back into his house, little gatehouse. Roger starts Fun. beeping. He's in the car behind. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who that Let's is go. behind us. Let's go! Cliff sitting in the seat next to him. <laughs> like leaning on the horse. <laughs> There's a cut out of Cliff, like in the passenger seat. <laughs> so he needs to constantly in the sweat. <laughs> Let's hold up! <laughs> <laughs> Um, he comes back out, says, okay, you're clear to head in. Uh, and he opens up the gate and you guys pull through. Yep. Yep. Yeah, except, and I say to the group in the car, okay, now he knows that we're here early. So this kind of fucks it all (laughs) up. Yeah, this kind of like the, it's all right. It's all right. We can, uh, we can take our time getting up to his office. Maybe he only called Gail. Right. It's all right. That's all right. We're allowed to be here. Yeah. And, you guys uh, slow yeah. the cars slowly pull up into the parking lot. Pull off park. Do you get out of your cars or do you stay in there for an hour and a half? No, we get out of our cars. <laughs> yeah, we we want to walk around. They get out of their cars. We want to walk around and take a look at the grounds. You start walking in the grounds. Yeah. Sun is getting low in the horizon. As we get further and further from June 21st, the light lasts a shorter amount of time. You don't see any patients out on the grounds. It's eerily quiet. What do you do? Like a lap of the hospital? I wanted to go into the hospital, but oh. I'll do what, whatever you guys want to do. Bobby's just got off the parking lot and started walking <laughs> started into walking. the grass. I mean, I, I was, I was thinking we want to recon, just make sure, you know, I don't know. See what's he's, going on he's walking place. around the building. You don't see any patients. Nothing. And you've seen patients out here before. Right. You don't see any patients. You don't no, see any no staff. No guards. Okay. You just walk. You see a fence in the distance. Mm-hmm. And you're, you do a loop around the whole place and come back around. All right. Seems pretty quiet. Seems pretty quiet. Sun's getting lower. It's not down yet. It's dusk for sure, though. Purplish sky. I think, yeah, I think we go inside then if there's nothing weird. Okay, you walk in the front doors uh, of the hospital and things are a little bit different. The uh, Gail is not there. Um, reception seems to be like closed. And there's uh, there's nobody like the, that's in that immediate area up front. It's crazy like if if this is like the night floors, the change has already taken place. And so we're entering a changed place. Potentially, unless it's just beyond. Maybe, the yeah, door. maybe. Because it is dark, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's up it's not fully black out, like I said, but like the sun is dropped below and you can see a purplish kind of sky, but it is definitely early evening. And, and he said in the gatehouse guard said the hospital's closed. Yeah. Right. Um, and it, you get the sense that he probably wouldn't have let you in unless Dallin cleared it for after hours. Should we go up to his office first? Or should we like, I mean, I kind of want to catch him. I don't, I'm afraid he's doing something. Yeah. We, we yeah, need to. But or what, yeah. what do you think? I yeah. kind of want to just look around a little okay, look, bit. Yeah, yeah. Let's look around and let's first. Let's look in the logbook, see if anybody uh, signed, who signed in the last half hour if people even signed in for this, he's summoning yeah. a demon. 
for this meeting. Yeah. <laughs> He's so many <laughs> <He's demons>. so- <laughs> I mean, I, I, know, I know for a fact. He's summoning a demon up there. I just demon know is it. Summoning a demon. I know it in my blood. What do you think, Cliff? He brought the cover. <laughs> well, I gave him a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting thing about summoning demons. <laughs> in ancient Babylonia. Right? Uh, uh, yeah, well, I flip open the logbook. I don't think anybody's going to sign it, but I look at it. So you go around behind the desk. <laughs> Is it not on the thing? It's around behind the desk. Yeah, I go. It's like underneath. Yeah. Okay, so you just walk into Gail's space, pull out this book. (laughs) Yeah, fuck Gail. (laughs) Open it up. Gail. And you start flipping through. You don't notice any visitors in the last half hour. They're charted. (laughs) So Jonathan Satan. Sorry. To yesterday, because we weren't here yesterday, just like browsing to see if any names pop up. No names you recognize. Okay. But there are a few. There are a few visitors, but not names you recognize. Do you want to go see Ed Wist? <sighs> Would it be what worth was the it? guy's name who did the video? The the IT guy. Oh, the Night like Watchman guy. He's on the board here. Uh, Richard Bryce. Oh, yeah. Richard Bryce is the other guy. The uh, one with the dead baby. Michael Devon. Michael Devon. Michael Devon. Should we go to the surveillance room? I don't know. If he's there, maybe like. He, uh, we could we could try and take a peek inside the office before we get in there to see who's in there. Yeah. I think everything's yeah. fair game here. Anything yeah, else know. in the office? Let's just do a quick search. We're here. Nobody's looking yeah, at us. Yeah. In Gail's desk? Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. 47. Under. No. You, no. Over search. You, you have like Over a twenty something search. Yeah, you're right. Um, yeah. You you just notice. I would say with your alertness, Roger. You just you're on the 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 lobby, like the yeah. entrance level of the hospital, and it's co- it's completely quiet, and no one's down here. It's like the hospital's closed, and the patients are in their wards. The common areas are empty, uh, and you just don't see anybody down here. It is strange that. There's nobody here. Where did you want to go? To the IT room, to the video surveillance area, to see if Michael is there, and also if we can check on the video footage and see if we can see what's going on by Dr. Dallin's office. Yeah. Okay. You take a flight of steps down and get to the door that uh, Esther Samagina had opened for you previously. You have your little cards, and you hold it up to the thing, and it beep, beep, eh, and a little red light comes up. Beep, beep, oh. eh. You can't get in to oh. the secured to the I security knock. room. I knock on it. No response. Fuck. We gotta pick this lock. Or we can check Gail's desk to see if she has a card. Okay, that too. <laughs> can I go back to reception and see if there are like other cards that someone would use? Sure. You, want you to go give back. You a search. Sure. 23 under 54. Nice. Yes. Ooh, you yes. pull out a whole thing of uh, guest passes and and cards. And um, there there seems to be different levels, different, you know, like, oh. uh, like um, you know, clearances. permission clearances. Yeah. Okay. I Can I tell what the levels are? Can I take like high level? No, they're all just different colors. They don't say on them like what they okay. give access to. They're just plastic, <laughs> solid colored things. Yeah, I'll just take them and one of each color and I go back okay. to security. Beep, beep, amp. Beep, beep, amp. Beep, beep, amp. <laughs> None of them open the security door. Uh, it's weird that you that get the sense a delay. That, you get the yeah. sense that these are all guest passes. Okay. Of some kind or another, and that none of them directly enter security. Okay, so maybe no. Maybe we go to the. Wait, wait. Patient? I got. I have oh. lock. I have locksmith. I have locksmith. I can roll lock. Pick lock, right? Yes. Yeah, uh, it's a digital keypad. Oh. Like a, you know, you got a magnetic whatever. You got to wave the card in front of it, kind of oh, lock. Oh, that won't work. Damn it, it doesn't have a keyhole. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> what is that from? That's from a uh, uh, police squad. That was that was <laughs> oh, the files of police squad. Yeah, it's the it best here. joke ever. I'm a locksmith. Guy comes in and says like, "Who are you? How did you get in here?" He says like, "I'm a locksmith." 
and have a long <laughs> <End of> story. No <laughs> <laughs> <Both> questions. <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> oh, it's been and <laughs> I'm a locksmith. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, all right. So you can't get into security. All right. Then we go. Patient floors to Dallin. What What do you guys think? We go to Dallin. Dallin. Go to Dallin. Okay. Uh, you begin heading up the stairs um, from the main lobby uh, to head to the third floor. As you're walking up, you hear some noises, um, but uh, they sound like people are in some of these wards, um, but it just seems like the regular kind of movement, motion of people, orderlies, whatever, um, behind the doors. Nothing strange, but you don't get the sense that you're completely alone in the hospital, is all. You walk up to the second floor and you see the closed doors or you into the common areas but the common areas are empty you continue up to the third floor the wing where uh, Dallin's office is you get up onto the third floor and you suddenly hear hey this really loud bursting voice comes from behind you as you were heading into the little waiting reception area out front of Dallin's office. It comes from behind you, from the women's ward that's on the other side of the third floor hallway. Surprise. Hey! We look. You guys turn around and you see someone you've never seen before. You see about a six foot eight man <laughs> who is massive in size and in in girth kind of um he doesn't seem like he's a shredded bodybuilder but he seems like he is as strong as he is imposingly tall he has these large massive hands down at his side and he's dressed in the uniform of an orderly and he says what are you doing security and he yells and he starts walking to you quickly. I Roger, get him. <laughs> no, I didn't say we're detectives. Yeah, no. say we're de yeah, let's hold out the we badges. Hold badges. We're detectives, we have a meeting. Yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. You go to reach down and he is coming at you. Everybody, let's get into some initiative. Oh, what? God, yeah, it's, it's on. I will. Hey! Take security! This he yells. <laughs> There is and no security. We already tried to knock yeah. on their door. <laughs> we already tried. There's nobody <laughs> yeah, home. There's nobody here. <laughs> nobody home in security. Uh, okay. As typical with uh, initiative, um, there is... Uh, you guys are just going by your dexterity scores. Uh, I have Neil with a 12, Roger with an 11, Vicky with an 11, Bobby with an 11. Yep. Does that sound right? Yep. Uh, okay. Terrific. That is going to put uh, our orderly uh, first to act, which is appropriate enough as he comes hauling across the room at you and like with, you know, just purpose to try to get to you. Who do you think is closest to him in this situation? It would depend on who kind of walked in first toward Dallin's office. I mean, Vicky was kind of leading the group. Like, she called the meeting and stuff. Mm -hmm. Maybe she's at the front, unless Roger, unless you want to be at the front because you like being at the front. So then who's in the back? I'm probably in the back. Okay. He comes walking up with purpose, and he reaches out to grab you, Neil. So he's going to roll a, uh, a, a an unarmed jerk. attack, basically, against you. Uh, and... <laughs> Amazing, slippery Neil. He rolls a ninety-six, uh -huh. and this guy knows what he's doing. And but somehow he and you just like slip out of the way, and uh, it is your turn. Okay, I, I'm going to uh, scramble back behind everyone else, but particularly Roger. <laughs> and uh, as I'm reaching for my bag, I'm going to like try to prepare a syringe. Like, okay. What's happening? 
you fall to the back uh, of the group and you reach down to try to grab a syringe and it is Roger's turn. All right. Roger is going to try and take this da- guy down to the ground with a rear naked choke. Amazing. Amazing. Brazilian jiu jitsu style. Um, he is going to get the guy's back and lock in a rear naked choke or attempt okay, to. Okay, so least. what are you rolling? Uh, unarmed combat. Unarmed okay. combat. Okay. You know, which I don't do a ton of, but I, I put a lot of points into it at character creation a yeah. long time ago. Uh, that is a one under 62. Oh, <laughs> you rolled a oh, natty one. I wish this was fucking him. Cthulhu. That would be oh, incredible. Oh my god. <laughs> a one under 62. <laughs> Sunk! So you just come around the back and you're like, Hoah! and you get this guy by the throat and he's like, Argh! and you feel the Hulk of this guy that you are on top of. You have to come off the ground to get around yep. his neck and you're just like hanging from him slash like trying to uh, whip around and like grip with your leg. Eggs. Hold on, let me pump up some. And mind you, Roger here. has a 17 strength. Uh, I think it is a crit, isn't it? Like all one, because like 11 is a crit, 22 is a crit. Otherwise, there's no crit possible between zero and and nine. Uh, you know what? I I feel like I read this now. <clears throat> a crit in Delta Green. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think that it's not a crit by the book, but I could be wrong. It it might have said that one is always a crit, 100 100 is always fumble. A critical success is a roll of one. Or any success with a dice match. So that is a crit. Yeah. Wow. Oh, nice. (laughs) Holy shit. Nice. Amazing. Yeah, because I can't roll a zero. That's right, Skid. Yeah, I mean, he succeeded on his uh, his dodge roll, but the crit trumps it. And you just, you come right over top of him, and you get him in this, like, choke lock and he's just like ah! uh, and it is uh, Vicky's turn and uh, Vicky you see in his you see in Roger's eyes like maybe during this the glasses come off and you see this look in his eyes Roger's gonna kill this guy oh my god <laughs> like he's Vicky not know, thinking Vicky straight he's look. protecting yeah. you guys <laughs> Vicky puts a knee on his chest and takes out her badge uh, and she a knee on his chest. Oh, I guess he's not on the ground. He's no, he's hulking up in front of you oh. right now, trying to like grab at Roger as he's being choked out. He's like, Argh! so Vicky holds up her badge close to him, and she says, "Stop resisting! Stop resisting! We are detectives! Stop resisting!" And she's just yelling at him. I could do a human roll, but she's trying to like diffuse the situation. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh, I, well, we'll just take that as your action. When it comes to his turn, yeah. we'll figure it out. Uh, Bobby. Bobby sees the struggle, pulls his gun, and is ready to put this guy down if if Roger can't get him get him to calm the fuck down. He's re- he's, he's trained mean, him. He's just It's a federal down. offense. Yeah. He's, he's, he's assaulting. He's coming at us. Yeah. He's coming at us. He's ready to... He's, he, yells, he yells at the guy, calm down, calm down, and we will put you down. Boom. This door behind him, where he came from, opens. You see three men oh, start no. running oh, into the room, so and you don't recognize any of their faces. Oh, shit. They just start running in, and one guy has a needle out, and he's coming up behind Roger oh, like no. this, up in the air, and just... Swoom! You see his hand disappears from your guy's perspective around behind Roger. Roger, you don't see this. Maybe your alertness tells you that something's coming. But before you can act, you feel this pinch in your back as this needle just wham into your back. And you just, and your head goes back and you start hearing like this. You start hearing music in your head. And it's like, and suddenly, like out of nowhere, you this like memory flashes into your mind, and you are in a warehouse, like dance party, and Nine Inch Nails is on stage, and they're playing closer, and it's just like. Poof, poof, 
<laughs> and you see yourself and you're sitting across from Norma and she's holding this little pillow Norma. and she's oh smiling <laughs> and she's like leaning close to you and you see yourself just like smile and let her put the pill into your mouth and you just like push your face into her mouth and like make out uh, on the thing and it's just like and in the same instant, it is um, uh, it is this guy's turn uh, who is on top of you. Oh, the other God. two are still flanking up, coming from behind. And uh, this guy is going to do an escape. So he's going to roll uh, an unarmed attack against you. And Bobby uh, hasn't taken his action, right? Bobby still has yeah, the gun trained, just, and now I'm this just, guy just yeah. stabbed me. Yes, exactly. Okay. okay. So this is all happening very, very quickly. I'm going to yeah. get to everybody really, really quick. Okay. So, uh, yeah. And so uh, he is going to roll uh, a success with a 30. Uh, but you are a little bit out of it, but you can feel the struggle happening. So go ahead and give me uh, a dodge roll. You'll need to get under your dodge, but. Oh, man. Um, mm. well, higher actually, than. I might have this a little wrong, but it doesn't matter that much. Let's see. Um, what is your dodge? Is it like 30 or 40 or 50. something? 50. 50? Yeah. Okay, so in an yeah. so what you're trying to hit is between 31 and 50 is what you kind of have to hit. Okay. Uh, and I failed. I just straight up failed with a 60 over 50. Oh. And it makes sense. I'm all drugged up. Like, yeah, like, so I, you my just reflexes you start, are slow. You start to like, you're, you feel like, yeah, you're like, oh, your reflexes are a little slow. And he's like pulling you down off of him, uh, which is when... Neil, you are uh, in the back here and you were reaching down. And as you reach down, let's say, like, let's say that the music that Roger's hearing in his, like, dream or whatever is like, it's playing in, like, the TV show that we're doing. And, uh, and, uh, you know, like Troy Lavalley style, where there's like an overlay of pop music that we can't afford to license. It. <laughs> and, uh, and it's playing over as you go down to reach for your bag and you there's nothing there. Like your bag is not there. You reach down and suddenly you start to like blink when you hear this guy's voice you're like grappling with Roger you start to blink and suddenly this memory washes before your eyes and you're and a memory that you have not thought of in 20 plus years and you're just in your apartment on the phone and you are talking to Chemical Bank on the phone and you're just like yes I'd like to make an appointment for 2pm to see my safe deposit box and you see yourself hang up the phone walk into a bathroom and just flush a safe deposit key down the toilet and you're like what in the fuck is going on and Bobby uh, or I'm sorry um, Vicky it comes to you and you're like stop you know detectives and in that moment you you um, your stomach drops out you feel like like something is is really really wrong something has is is terribly wrong like in your mind because this flash happens and you think of the dream that you had last night of, of your friend and the summoning and everything and it made you think of like the yellow sign and like what that did and how you almost showed her the yellow sign but instead of stabbing your own hand you see yourself showing her the yellow sign you see her entire life devolve into madness and ruin from seeing that and then there's another flash and you see that you have written the yellow sign on on every wall of your old apartment in New York City in 1995, on the ceiling, on the walls, over and over and over again. And you just start to blink and shudder and you look over at your hand and there's nothing in your hand. There's there's no badge oh, in your God. hand. I'm and it. Uh, and um sorry. And we come back to Bobby and Bobby is like his friend is going down. Are you shooting Bobby? Yes, I'm taking the shot. I see, I see the guy with the syringe. I'm who going, like the big guy? The, the 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 guy who just attacked Roger with the syringe. Uh, okay, and you just, you think about murdering this guy, and the second you think about it, you flash back to how good you are at this, how this is your zone, and it is something you've always been good at. Ice cold killing. You remember being in Michelle Van Fitz's apartment. You remember kneeling down over her body and turn over, you know, while she was like just unconscious, and turning to Neil and Roger and Vicky and just being like, uh, I, I can take care of her. Uh, I just want to make sure that you're all cool with this. And 
Vicky and Neil and Roger all look on in horror as you grab Michelle Van Fiss's neck and just snap it and murder her. A memory that you thought was Roger's doing, but in fact, you were the one that cracked her neck. And that's when you look down and see that there is no gun in your hand and you have absolutely no way to defend against these guys Holy and they shit. start swarming over you and this music continues in Roger's head as as uh, uh, we continue to hear closer and Roger you see that like you're walking into your apartment and Vicky is not standing next to you it's Norma and you walk inside it just like it, it's like uh, remember Fight Club that awesome uh, love scene in yeah. Fight Club where oh, you just yeah. see the bodies and you can't see the faces and it's all like distorted well, like that's what's happening. And in your original memory of it, you thought it was Vicky, but it was Norma 17 oh, times wow. with Norma. <laughs> <laughs> and then you feel, you know, you feel the bottom, the bottom uh, dropping out. It's just like, it's so bizarre. And then you hear this voice coming from uh, the distance behind you. And it's just like, it's okay. Be gentle with them. And then all of a sudden, uh, Bobby, you see yourself kneeling down uh, on the boardwalk in Brighton Beach, and you're drawing out an engagement ring, and you're proposing. And we see Janice standing across from you and smiling, and tears are coming down your, her face, and she launches into your arms and gives you this, this huge smile, and an orderly comes over and grabs you, and as you're distracted, it just like, he gets right on top of you and starts like, holding you uh, down and again this voice it's okay it's like very strange you don't know where it's coming from like somewhere behind you everyone calm down Neil you see yourself uh in the night floors. You remember the night floors. Now that you're in here and you're like, you feel that this might be, you know, a manifestation of the night floors and you're thinking about that when all of a sudden this memory comes clear to you of you just walking from the smoking lounge down the hallway and Vicky and Bobby are behind you and Rourke is standing right between them and Vicky's yelling, don't Neil, don't! And you're walking away and just with this smile on your face, you're like, I have an invitation. And you're just walking away as we hear bing and an elevator opens in the wall right next to you and you just walked into it and the elevator closed behind you and that's when you look down Neil and instead of your bag you see a gown a patient gown of the Dorchester house and you realize that not only do you not have medical supplies or a badge or an ID but you are a patient. A patient? Oh, You're God. a patient. Vicky all of a sudden remembers being on a plane <laughs> flying to Myrtle Beach. She's laughing, thinking about the pilots. What would happen if the pilots uh, all of a sudden slumped over? How would they land the plane? Ha, ha, ha. And when the camera pans over and we see that she's sitting next to Christopher on the plane and Roger was never there and this is Vicky when you start questioning your entire life everything you thought had, that had happened and you look down and you're in a patient's gown and oh, this voice uh, comes through again Roger don't fight Roger it's, it's not worth it and Roger is bucking as the drugs start flowing through his system and again we hear that rising crescendo of, uh, of closer and you see this flash uh, of uh, Roger you see a flash of you wearing this patient gown and then uh, again it flashes and you're standing at the night floors and at the door to the floor Thomas Manuel right in front of you ready to reach out and pull the trigger and just blow him away you put Vicky's uh, head into your shoulder and say don't look and just shoot at this guy Th but it's just not true it's just not true you you put Vicky's uh, head into your shoulder and you say don't look and then you just walk her through into the night floors with Thomas Manuel and he smiles and closes the door behind both of you uh -oh. bringing him bringing you guys with him into the night floors <sighs> Bobby, we come back to you and your memory becomes clear as day. You are sitting in the common room of the Dorchester. Your patient gown is on and Dr. Dallin is sitting across from you. And he's like, Bobby, I, I don't think it's a good idea if your father visits this weekend. I think we, we might need a little more time. And you're like, 
Uh, like as this is tearing through you, Vicky, <laughs> you see powerful. yourself laughing on a summer day in Battery Park, and you're walking with a slice of pizza, and you're talking to Christopher about maybe trying to have a baby, and then the thought just like makes your stomach sick. You you hear Dallin in your voice, or in your head, you hear Dallin's voice, and he's just like, Vicky, what would Christopher think if he heard that you'd taken a step back? You're you're doing so well. Don't throw it all away now. Think of Christopher. And uh, Neil comes back and seeing this uh, patient gown on him is like, you know, freaking out as a orderly grabs him and starts injecting him with something. And as soon as he sees the needle out of the corner of his eye, Neil, you uh, see yourself, boom, clear as day in a car in an Arby's parking lot and you're just injecting a needle into Fran's arm and oh. shooting her full of heroin oh, and God. pull the needle out and just sit back and look at her as she smiles and says, thank you. And her eyes roll in the back of her head. Oh, and that's when, Vicky, God. your world drops out from underneath you. Something is terribly wrong. We see Roger, the groom at his wedding. He's raising a toast to the love of his life. And it's Norma. He's marrying Norma. And now, Vicky, you're in the doctor's office. You're in the patient office with Dr. Dallin, but you're not speaking with Dr. Dallin. A different doctor is looking at you, and he says, uh, it's a different doctor. I'm sorry, it's not Dallin's office. It's a different doctor. And he's looking at you, and he's saying, I'm, I'm afraid the last round of in vitro hasn't worked as we'd hoped. We Jeez. can try again, but do you want to discuss all other alternatives with your, your husband? What? And you start to like realize this shuddering horror comes through you, and you feel as if you're going to be sick. You feel as if something is wrong with, uh, what's his name? What's his name, Sam? Sam! Um, Sam. As if something is wrong with Sam, we see uh, you uh, are speaking with uh, eight-year-old Sam as he comes off li the Little League field in Central Park, and your body begins to reject the illusion, and you see that you are on a grass, the grass field outside of the Dorchester house, and oh. you're in a patient gown, and Dr. Down is just kind of watching you and like taking uh. notes, and this excruciating pain comes into you. This pain that makes you realize that Sam isn't real. You don't have uh, a son. You're sitting there. You're like, no, I watched him graduate. And an orderly grabs you in slow motion, we see. And you're you're sitting there watching him in high school. And, and you're clapping and you're smiling and tears are running down your face. And as we pull along to the side, we see Christopher is just looking at you and tears are coming down his face of pure sadness. And both of you are just on a bench in the Dorchester house grounds. And and it, it, the realization is overwhelming. We hear a cell phone vibrating in Dr. Dallin's office, Vicky, and you pick up the phone, you say, sorry, it's my son. And you see yourself in a patient gown with nothing in your hand. And you just walk out of the office <laughs> to take this phone call. Oh my God. <laughs> and right, the, as the last needle plunges, plunges into the last of you, we black out. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, awesome. are, we, are we all crazy right now? <laughs> <laughs> this is I what happens crazy. to us. This is what happens to the agents. They're are not crazy. Yeah. This is what happened to like Whitworth. This is what happened to Westover. Oh my God. They this got into to deep. all of them. And now we live in a hospital run by demons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can, it's like so cinematic. Yeah. Joe, yeah. This is such a wonderful I it's literally like Shutter Jesus. Island or something. Yeah, yes. I'm freaking out. And I imagine like Vicky is screaming. Yeah. Give me back my son. Like she is screaming She's at screaming. Them. I imagine it all like we don't hear what you're saying. We just see you screaming and the music is just playing and driving uh, that uh, end of closer that's so good. Ba 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 and you guys are just Cliff, Cliff, that's probably the worst Cliff. part. That's probably the worst part. It's like you're looking over and there is no cardboard cut out of John Ratzenberger. And that's when Roger finally snaps. <laughs> well, isn't it interesting, though, that he did choose a cutout of Cliff Clavin, who is a mailman? 
So, yeah, that's <laughs> God, that's some subconscious stuff yeah. right there. <laughs> some subconscious stuff. Well, uh, I need uh, a quick breather. Let's take a break and uh, we'll come right back and uh, and deal with this situation. <laughs> God. We just took a quick break too, and uh, all somberly discussed how horrible this is. <laughs> <laughs> this is horrible, this is but it's horrifying, and that's what this is. This is a horror RPG, and this is one of the scariest things that I can imagine. And let's go right back into it. And we'll, from that, we faded to black after that, and let's fade up slowly. Um, as if eyes blinking and uh, eyes blinking and opening and it's Roger's eyes and you open and across from you Roger you see a small man with gray hair glasses little goatee slim uh, short build maybe five seven f five six uh, about 150 160 pounds and He's sitting across from you and you're in a bed that is propped up so that you're able to sit and you're strapped down to the bed with leather straps. And he says, Roger, you're coming around. How are you feeling? Roger uh, looks at the restraints. They're pretty they extra durable yeah they they seem as if they're built to restrain you specifically and okay. so they had to do double duty right, so he doesn't come try stone to, strength restraints he doesn't try come to stone grade yeah they had to have them flown in from japan <laughs> yeah. this is a dude that ripped off a door uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the uh the chain of a door from the outside <laughs> and ripped the whole thing off the wall so i'm gonna be tied that. in there pretty good. right before yeah. bobby killed Michelle Van Fitz. Oh, God. He thinks. Oh, um, God. Um, he just looks at the guy and says, uh, I feel good. That is good. That is good. And he takes, like, a little note in his book. You had gotten a little riled up there. I feel like you're 
game went a little too far this time, do you think? Yeah, yeah, maybe. Can I ask you a question? Absolutely, Roger. Am I, uh, my home? Well, not yet, but you're doing very well. And that is what I was so worried about when I came out and I saw you hanging on Ed. I thought, don't throw it away, Roger. We're so close. We're so close to finding home. I... Is, uh... Me... Vicky... Is she okay? Oh, yes. Vicky is just fine. She's doing well. Um, I'm going to speak to her shortly. I just wanted to make sure that you, uh... Okay, and that this brief uh, event won't occur again. We would like to let you out of your restraints, of course, but we can't unless we know you won't attack Ed again. I, uh, I understand. Uh, no, no problems here. Well, thank you, Roger. That's, that's very good to hear you speak this way. Um, perhaps rest a bit longer and then we could remove these harnesses and let you move about the hospital. Does that sound good? Whatever you think is best, Doc. All right. Excellent. Um, I'll be back shortly. And we see him leave and walk across and open a door to the common area, walk through there. In the common area, we see there's some patients in there sitting around speaking. He, but nobody you recognize. He walks across to uh, the women's area, the women's ward, and we see him step into a room where Vicky is in a very similar situation, strapped down but propped up in a little bit more of a comfortable position. There's a small tray and a cup and a little straw sticking out of it for her, and he comes in. Are you thirsty, Vicky? And he grabs the, the cup and moves it over to your lips. Vicky turns her head away. Well, I, I just spoke to Roger. He asked how you were. You know, he's always concerned about you. And I said you were fine. And I'd like that to be true. Are you feeling better? Is Roger okay? Roger's fine, yes. In fact, I think we'll have him out of his restraints rather soon. He seems to have understand that what he did is unacceptable. And that it won't happen again. Could I say the same for you? Vicky. Oh, this is so hard. <laughs> Vicky's like trying to like, like trying to ground herself as if, I don't know, if, if you like suffer from a mental illness or something, like she's trying to do something in her brain to ground herself. Like my name is Victoria Ricci. I am like this age. I grew up in New York City. Like, she's, like, in her brain trying to, like, calm herself down. Um, and she just nods at the doctor. Roll up, pow times five. Okay. Ooh, baby. 61 under 65. Oh, man. Ooh, ooh, nice. Clutch. As you're trying to ground <clears throat> yourself, you you get the feeling that you you don't belong here and that despite your own memories that you're you're you shouldn't be a patient here but the more that you try to ground yourself in memory the more that you see this time in this facility that you've been here for years and years and he sits across from you and he says i know that you're operational days were very exciting and I know that we try to give that as a focus for you for your healing process but it can't result in you attacking orderlies I'm sure you understand I didn't attack anyone fair enough I didn't see you attack anyone uh, but I didn't attack anyone did I Roger didn't do anything did Roger she turns away again. And I, then she turns back and she says, 
I understand. And it won't happen again? She's like gritting her teeth, like almost chewing her cheeks. (laughs) No. Good. Well, I'll give you a little more time to rest. Doctor? Yes. Doctor? Doctor? Friend. Doctor? Dr. Friend? Friend, yes. Friend. Come on, Vicky. She just like nods slowly and turns away from him again. And she then she turns back and she says, Can you let me out? Can you come back and let me out? Oh, of course. Absolutely. Rest easy. We'll be back shortly. She turns away again, but she keeps mumbling like, Dr. Friend, Dr. Friend. She's trying to like think of that name. She just wanted his name, trying to like connect the dots and get back to reality. Mm Mm-hmm. You think of his name and you know that he has been your doctor for years. Fuck me. That he has been caring (laughs) for you in this facility for years. She's like hitting her, after he leaves the room, she's like hitting her head against the pillow and she's like, God fucking damn it. (laughs) She's like so mad that she can't escape this. Mm Mm-hmm. He sits across from Neil. We just cut to him sitting down in a little one of those little stools that rolls around the room. <laughs> Dr. Bachman, I want you to be honest with me, and no one will be in trouble. Did Roger put you up to this again? Trapped us, have you? Trapped me like a rat in a cage. A rat. I wouldn't consider yourself a rat. In a maze. Doctor. Rats can be quite intelligent, you know. Don't mis- misunderstand me. Don't underestimate them. <laughs> Just got chills. That was <laughs> bad. <laughs> Ass. <laughs> this is, well, Dr. Bachman, you of all the patients on this ward have been making incredible progress. We, we've we talked about how soon you will be released to the second floor. And I don't want this set back any more than you do. Let's try to stay away from all forms of violence, yes? It's a cycle, you know, being in a maze, turning left, right, seem to be going in circles but the only way out is through yes yes you've said that many times and I tend to agree I want to go speak with Bobby but I'd like us to continue uh, our conversation about the king in yellow uh, that we were having last week have you thought any more about what that means the through Have you found any? I've been thinking about an episode of a television show I liked years ago called Airwolf. (laughs) And he looks at his fingers and he has these calluses from painting. And he looks at his fingers to see if they're still there. Yes, they're still there. How long do you say I've been here? Uh, You have been here for 20 years, Dr. Bachman. Hmm. Puts his hand back in his lap, says, I see. Thank you, you've been most helpful. Thank you. And remember, when I come back, I want to know more about your latest reading of the texts. Yes. We'll have quite an interesting conversation. Indeed we will. And then he sits down with Bobby. Last but certainly not least. Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. Would you, if you had had a gun, would you truly have shot Ed? You love Ed. I don't don't, don't know Ed. Of course you know Ed, Bobby. No? Yes. Perhaps it's the sedative still wearing off. 
Ed has been caring for you for a very long time, Bobby. I've seen you two laughing together dozens of times. What? 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 We're no, not ringing any bells? This doesn't make sense. How? Oh. Bobby, are you... Are you working for Delta Green, Bobby? Y- yeah. N- no. Yeah, kind of? Yeah. Are you on an operation right now, Bobby? In the hospital? Is, is there something wrong in the hospital that Delta Green must fix? Yes. Bobby, we've worked through this uh, several times. You have not been a Delta Green agent for 20 years. You are not on a Delta Green operation and there is nothing sinister in this hospital. You are recovering from exposure to the unnatural that you suffered in New York City in 1995. You have long periods of lucidity where you remember this, but then others where you drift and that's okay. We're working through it. My my father your father is he has stopped visiting for some time he came more frequently in the early years Maybelline Messiah Myrna Bobby I think maybe you need a little more sleep and You'll remember that Maybelline is Vicky, and now is just Dr. Bachman. He's a fellow patient of yours. I know that you tried to gather everyone into a Delta Green operation, told them they had code names, gave them their secret names, and look, I, as much as anyone, am interested in going with it when it's therapeutic, but if you attack an orderly, it, it pushes it too far beyond the lines. Agreed? He attacked us. Well, you were out of your beds, past uh, Lights out. Not lights out. You were out of your beds, past um, bedtime. <laughs> bedtime. <laughs> this. Bobby, I am a master of improv. You're just not remembering it correctly. <laughs> because you have a strong sedative uh, on right now. I'm tired. So tired. So tired. Time. So tired. <laughs> I know. I don't know. Hi. Bobby, get some rest. I would like to take these off in the morning. If rest. possible. A rest. Uh, rest. Close your eyes and relax. It'll all pass soon. And you'll remember where you are. And he stands up and walks away, and he walks by Ed. And you hear him just say, keep an eye on him. And this big guy just comes over and he's looking at you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so in the zone that I didn't drop uh, some of these images. I've got images for you. Oh, oh gosh. Uh, so, oh, no. uh, big fella. Um, doo, 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 doo. I'm sorry. Big fella is right here. Oh, God. Oh, no. Mr. Ed? That's Mr. Ed. Mr. Oh, Ed? God. Sure, yeah, we're buddies. And, uh, <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Here's the doctor that you all know as Dr. Maximo Friend. Dr. Friend. Dr. Friend. Dr. Friend, Dr. Friend. of course. He um, seems friendly. <laughs> he seems <laughs> friendly. <laughs> I think. I think. Um, some hours later, uh, Many, many hours later. In fact, let's say all of you doze again. And you feel like you have slept a very, very long time. When an orderly turns up, who each of you haven't seen before, excuse me, and begins to remove your harnesses. And says nothing to you, but just puts them off like a matter of course. And then walks out of your room. Each of you individually are left free of your harnesses. 
Is there anything in the room to use as a weapon? Is there <laughs> anything? Oh, you know what? I'm so sorry. After that whole incident, I didn't have anybody roll sanity checks, oh, which God. seems preposterous. <laughs> so can everyone please give me a massive sanity check Lord. for a lot of damage that's coming oh, our way? God, this is a lot of damage. Oh, success. 23 under 59. Uh, and this would be from helplessness. Okay. And this is under your current sanity, right? Yeah, it's under your current, current sanity. sanity. Yeah, no, that's fail. Okay, so Roger, you succeed? Yeah. Okay, you take a point of sanity damage. Vicky? Uh, I, I've been rolling so well, it feels unfair. I rolled a 13 <laughs> oh, under 64. God okay, so you take a point of sanity damage. I love this image of you trying to ground yourself. You only took one point. Yeah. Roger just kind of like went with the flow, almost like he's playing them. He took well, one yeah, point. Well, yeah, like I imagine Roger has been trained on what to do if you're captured. Yeah. And so yeah. even though he's not completely in his right mind, I want, I want to lean into the fiction of like this. I think there's a part of him that that deep down understands, and so he's just playing along. His time will come. Don't piss off the guards. <laughs> no reason to make enemies. Yeah. Um, what about Bobby? Bobby failed. It's a 68 over, okay. over 30 or over Bobby, 41. you take five points of sanity. Oh! Oh. And it's perfect too, but with how you played it, oh my God, where you yeah. were like, "Yes, I'm a Delta Green agent." Where's yeah. Murnau? Where's what you know what I mean? Like, happening? you do not believe that you are a patient oh here. Oh God, all. I'm hurt. And what about Neil? I failed also. Oh Neil. fuck! Oh, oh God damn! Neil. Oh my God! Another left. five. Oh, rolled damn. two fives in a row. Another That's five a breaking points. point for me. Oh, no. God. <laughs> okay, so just jot down the breaking point. But similar to the mechanic in the night floors. Nothing happens. We're not insane yet. So you do but. take the damage. However, you don't uh, experience uh, a brief moment of insanity, nor do you get a disorder. Uh, you just take that loss in points. Okay. Just so you know, mechanically, you know, just because you don't get disorders and you don't experience these sort of uh, breaks or whatever, it will... Uh, Getting to zero sanity will still mean the loss of the character, and it just you know it means you kind of like enter the the night floors forever kind of thing. So oh, it is looming. Um, okay, Jesus sorry. Christ. Let's go back. Everybody's out of their harnesses uh, and free to walk about the hospital. Oh no! <laughs> is there anything in this room to use as a weapon? Let's just uh, no. There's no okay. there's absolutely no. not. It's a bunch of guns. <laughs> It's just a rack room. of AR-15. Crazy, yeah. but he's like more guns. <laughs> yeah, Please no, you return them. Just don't, don't just if, put your name down in the book. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, look, you look around, and you don't see any. Okay, I would like to go to the common area. Assume Vicky's mm. assuming that Roger and everybody else is going to be let out right now too. Um, uh, you start walking through the common area, and you see a woman is sitting in there in the same gown as you. Um, beautiful, dark-skinned young woman sitting uh, on one of the chairs. And, I mean, she looks like she's like 28 years old. Like, she's just so young looking. She's just kind of like, cro her legs are crossed and she's kind of bobbing her left heel up and down in the air. She's looking around and as you walk through, she says, hi, Vicky. <laughs> Vicky's like looking around and then she walks over to her and she goes, how do you know my name? It's me, <laughs> Vicky, it's me, Deborah, Deborah Carver. We know each other, Vicky. It's okay. It's okay. Um, do you know where, um, Roger is or ba Bobby? Oh, I'm sure they're in the the men's ward um, um you can probably head over there if you'd like how long have i been here as long as i've been here how long have you been here i don't remember if i'm honest why are you here i have a drug problem and I'm, i've been working with dr friend mm -hmm. to work on that where's dr dallin who is Dr. Dallin? <laughs> what year is it? It is 2015. We're in Boston, right? 
Yes, the Dorchester house. Okay. <laughs> Vicky. Oh. Fuck, what time is it? Um, and she looks up at the clock and it's like 11.52. P.M. P.M. Oh, okay. She's like, it's it's 11.52. Hey, honey, calm down. It's okay. <laughs> hey, okay. Yeah, you calm down. You don't tell me to calm down. I am... I have to go find... I have to go find them. How do I get to the men's floor? Do we get to go there? Yeah, it's just straight across. Okay. Oh. Are you all right? No. No! <laughs> Stop talking to me! <laughs> <laughs> and then oh. Vicky, like, walks away and then turns back and, like, is just, like, looking at her and doesn't... And she's not there and it's just she's Mr. Ed. No, I'm it's not. Kidding. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's just sitting there. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. Is that, oh, and then she runs back really quick. Is Ed Whist a patient here? Ed Whist. No, not that Dorothy I know. Yale. Dorothy Yale. Or, 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 or uh, Lyra Westover. Yes, Dar- Dorothy Yale. Yes, she is a patient here. Uh, Westover. Westover, yes. Patient here. I knew it. Okay. Thank you, Deborah. <laughs> Good job, Deborah. <laughs> and Vicky, you you're heading to the men's ward. Yeah, and Vicky is trying to again stay grounded and she's like, "We are here now. We did it. We're here. This is where they are. Now we're here." She like doesn't understand it, but she's like, "We did it. And now we just have to figure it out." And she's going to find the boys. Okay. So Vicky comes out and she begins to cross the hallway uh to the men's ward. You open up the door um, into their common area from across the other side of the stairs. And as you walk in, you're immediately like accosted by a man, uh, a disheveled looking skinny man who um, is about your size. He's about your height. He's about your build. Uh, just kind of a smaller guy, uh, brown, you know, mussy hair, and uh, just generally unkempt. But he doesn't appear to be in the same patient gown as you. His gown is, it's not even a gown. It's more like silk, like pajamas and slippers. And he's got this frantic look in his eye. And he just... <laughs> And he grabs onto your uh, gown, and he's just like, "Vicky, I, I might, I think, I think I might have killed somebody. What? I think I might have killed somebody." Stop touching me! Get your hand off me! And as you get close to him, and you say, "Stop touching me! Get your hand off me!" and he says, "I think, I, I think I might have killed somebody." You see beyond the unkempt look, a face that you recognize. A face that you have seen sepia photographs of and charcoal paintings of. And it is the face of Asa Darabondi. Oh, what the fuck? No way. And we'll see you next week. Oh, my God. Oh, no way. What is fucking happening? I'm going to throw up. Oh, my God. Oh my god. Ain't it crazy how the knife works? (laughs) What is happening? (laughs) Oh, I love you guys. Let's get back together next week and play some more. We'll see you next time. Good night, everybody. (laughs) Sweet nightmares, everybody. Terrible night. Horrible night, everyone. (laughs) 